What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So this week we're going to look at a new application for the extension Soap Skin and Bubble. Before we get started, I want to thank my newest supporters on Patreon. So big thank you to William Downer, Jad Mazarib, Tom Farrington, and Tanya McKinnery. Uh, Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on this channel is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to support the show, maybe vote on the extension that I cover every week, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is very much a modeling concept and uh, kind of workflow video in the sense that uh, th the shape that we're going to create is similar to shapes that we've created before, but I want to talk about just some of the models styles because this could really kind of uh, increase your ability to create different kinds of models. So let's say for example that we had a fairly uh, complex structure. Let's say that it had it was made up of a number of different circles. So if I made a bunch of 20 foot circles or not even 20 foot circles, let's say they varied. So let's say we had a 15 foot and then over here maybe another 15 foot and then we go back to a 20 foot circle. So something like this. And so what you might want to do with something like this is you might want to create a shape that kind of like arcs or turns upwards. And that gets really kind of complicated because you, you can't really do anything about that right now. So you could try to model like a frame or something like that, um, but it wouldn't really work the way that we want it to work. But let's say for example, like if I was to come in here and try to do something where I have something kind of up in the center over here with sandbox tools or something like that, you can see how it doesn't create a very good shape like nothing's uniform you get these ugly tries your geometry is not pretty all those different things well what we're going to do in this case is we're actually going to come in here with soap skin and bubble and we're going to use this to generate geometry that we can then move um, using the sandbox tools so we're not actually using it to create a soap skin we're using it to create a grid inside this shape that we can then use to edit this and so i'll show you what i'm talking about so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to erase out all these like circular overlaps in the middle then I'm going to delete out this skin. And so the reason for that is because if you look at this, if you do like a view hidden geometry, there's nothing in here, right? There's nothing you can select and move around or anything like that. And so what we're going to do instead is we're going to, once we've deleted this, I'll turn hidden geometry back off. We're actually going to use soap skin and bubble to create a grid centered inside of the shape that we can then use to edit this. So in order to do that, and I will link to this extension in the notes down below, I'm going to click on the button for generate soap skin. If you remember what generate soap skin does is that allows you to create a grid or a skin inside a group of closed edges like this. So the groups do need to be closed in order for this to work. But now let's say that I wanted to come in here and first of all, we're going to adjust our division to something like maybe 20 or maybe 30. So we'll, we'll go with 20. I like that because it gives me a line right down the middle, um, which can get important in just a second. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to type in 20. We're going to hit the enter key. And so what that does is that creates a soap skin inside of the shape. And so if we wanted to, we could come in and we could adjust the bubble settings in order to uh, have this bubble up or down. So this is how we would create... like a tensile structure or something like that. So we could do like a negative 20 or a negative 10 or whatever we want. And uh, that would probably work okay, but what happens is you get these like weird little like, um, you get these weird little artifacts at the corners just because of the way the geometry is split up in here. So what I want to do instead is I want to take that geometry, whoops, we'll undo this, maybe. Maybe we'll just recreate this. So I just want to take the geometry that this recreates. So in this case, 20, enter, and I actually want to go in here and I want to edit this with my sandbox tools instead. Because what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to create something that kind of moves the edges up and down a little bit more. And so what I'm going to start off with is a lot of the time what we've done is we don't select anything. And then in sandbox tools, we come in here and we use the smooth tool to move things up and down. So you can see how that gives us kind of a circular shape that we can then move. But the problem is I don't want to move the center of this up and down based on this circle, I want to move this up and down based on the center. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to drag my mouse box across this middle line. 
and then I'm going to activate the smooth tool. You can see how when I activate the smooth tool now, um, it's picking up all of the geometry inside of this shape based on this center point. So now if I move this up and down, what this is going to do is this is going to let me create a shape that bends across the middle um, while the edges don't bend quite as far. And part of the reason for this is because of our radius. So our radius is going to adjust how far out points are adjusted based on what's selected. So in this case, if I was to type in a radius of like, let's say 20 feet and hit the enter key, you can see how now these boxes aren't quite as big. And so what these boxes are indicating is they're indicating the strength at which these edges are going to be affected. So right here in the middle, you can see how the boxes are the biggest because that's where the most um, where the most effect of the smooth tool is going to be generated. So you can see how as I move this, I get a lot more movement where the boxes are big than where the boxes are small. So when you have this selected, adjust your radius. So I'm going to turn this back to 35 feet, but you can adjust your radius to adjust the effect that's created in here. And so once I've done this, what I can do now is let's say that I want these two ends to move back down. Well, what I can do is I can select this end and I can select this end. And if you want to be really precise about that selection, you might consider uh, turning parallel parallel projection on and looking at it straight from the side here. So you can just come in here and you can select this end and you can select this end. And since these are our edges of our selection, we can use sandbox tools again to move both of those down at the same time while not affecting the rest of the shape. So you can see how that same radius that we had before is now affecting how far out these pieces are affected as well. So in this case, I'd probably increase my radius by typing in something like 50 feet. and then clicking and dragging this up or down. So you can see how you can use this to do a lot of different things inside of your shapes. And so all of this is possible because of that grid that I could create using soap, skin, and bubble. And then there's a few other things you could do in here as well. Like for example, I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna reverse all these faces. If I wanted to, I could come in here and use something like uh, lines to tubes in order to create tubes all the way around all of these edges to make this look more like a tensile structure. So, um, and I may do that in a second. Another thing that I could do is I could go around here and I could figure out where I think like support beams or something like that would go and I could draw lines up and down. Then I could do the same thing using lines to tubes or I may also do that with something like profile builder. But the key here is the whole reason that something like this is possible is because of that geometry that we can quickly create using soap, skin, and bubble. And then I could just take these and make a copy of them using the move tool and then flip them. So we'd flip them to a scale of negative one. And then I just move this back so that this is along this circle as well because this whole thing should be fairly symmetrical. So there's a little gap on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. So in this case, probably what I would want to do is I would want to select all of this geometry. And then I, I like to use the extension selection toys to deselect my faces. I'm not even sure if you need to do that in order to create these tubes. But then I could just use the extension lines to tubes, which I will link to in the notes down below, to create tubes along this whole piece of geometry, which is going to take a while because it's going to generate a bunch of different tubes in here. So now you can come in here and select all of these faces and make them transparent. And so the other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could come in here and you could use an extension like Profile Builder, which I will link to in the notes down below. It is a paid extension, but it's much more, uh, it gives you a lot more options when it comes to your extrusions. So you could use Profile Builder to add something like a, like a steel tube like this one along those instead of just pipes. So with all of this uh, selected, you could come in here and you could actually generate all of these different edges as steel tubes rather than pipes. 
So that's where I'm gonna end this video. I guess I guess the key to all of this is if you can create that ge geometry that you can then move around, um, then you can create basically whatever you want. So that's uh, one of the reasons that Soap Skin and Bubble is such a great extension. But leave a comment below, let me know what you thought, if this is something you might use, or if you thought about this kind of application. I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.